all right so in the last episode of this deep learning pytorch series we have started talking about graph neural network and we touched in the previous episode we uh, generally talked about how the graph looks like how you can define a graph and what are the representation for graph which a machine can understand right so slowly we are moving into the graph neural network and in this episode i will mainly talk about the message passing technique for graph neural network so without further delay let's get started right so uh, so we can have different prediction task using graph right so one of them could be like node level prediction so you have a set of nodes where you know the properties of certain nodes but you don't know the property of a, a particular node right so for an example like if this person smokes or not right so that is an unlevel node on which we will make predictions at the graph level so currently what i am talking about is what are the different types of uh, prediction task you can do using graph neural network so slowly we will move to the message passing technique right then we can also have like a age level prediction so in case of age level prediction uh, there are certain two nodes now we want to know if there is a connection between those two nodes right so uh, like say for a particular uh, node that node is of a person and the other nodes which are like surrounding nodes are a certain episode of netflix right then if there is a edge between those two nodes then uh, we can say that that can be the next netflix video for that person so this is kind of a, a recommendation system problem which you can also formulate using graph and this is we generally also call as link prediction then there is a graph level prediction which is you are making prediction on the full graph right so uh, one of the example is like is this molecule a suitable drug right which we generally use in case of drug discovery so we get a, a molecule with uh, a graph structure and then we kind of predict if that mo molecule is a suitable drug for a particular disease or not right so with that let's get uh, talk about why graphs are a bit different when we compare with the traditional machine learning problems right so there are mainly two reasons so first of all like graph exists in a non euclidean space uh, which makes it harder to analyze right so if you understand any of the machine learning algorithms like uh, k nearest neighbor or linear regression or logistic regression they exist in a uh, Euclidean space. So generally, we measure the Euclidean dense, uh, Euclidean distance, and then we try to make predictions. So, which is very much similar in case of k nearest neighbor, right? But in case of graph, it exists in a non-Euclidean space. So we have to tackle the graph uh, prediction problems in a different manner, right? And the next is like graph doesn't have a fixed form, right? They are dynamic in nature. Just to give you an example, if two graphs can have same adjacency matrix, right? So with the representation of uh, same adjacency matrix, we can come up with two different graphs, right? And also like uh, same graphs can be represented with different adjacency matrix, right? This we can do like the both the scenarios which I talked about. One is like two different graphs can have same adjacency matrix or same graph can have two different adjacency matrix right that we can achieve by varying the ordering of the nodes right so that is a problem right so if, if we are uh, kind of changing the order that will affect the output right so that's why with these two uh, reasons like graph exists in a non euclidean space and graph doesn't have a fixed form so we need to tackle graph in a different manner while comparing with the traditional machine learning problems Right, so we need to have a strict pair of permutation and invariance. Right, so which means that the ordering of the node does not affect the output. So this permutation invariance functions are like average or sum. Right, so if you swap two numbers and you change the places of two numbers, the output of your sum or average doesn't uh, affect. Right, so the output remains same. So that's why we need to use a permutation invariance function while tackling with the problem of graph and uh, that's why like graph is a bit different while comparing with the traditional machine learning uh, problems right so uh, so generally we use certain techniques like graph convolutional network or graph attention networks so which uh, builds which tries to solve these two problems which is like graph uh, doesn't have a fixed shape 
or fixed form and also it doesn't exist in a non-euclidean Euclidean space now with the help of message passing technique right which is like the key focus for this video so with this with the help of message passing technique we can solve any uh, graph related prediction task right so in case of CNN like if you remember our previous episodes like in case of CNN we run through a filter across the image and that uh, using that filter we try to extract the features right and that feature that kernel or that uh, filter is kind of a learnable parameter so in case of GNN or the graph neural network we use a similar technique and we call as uh, uh, message passing in case of CNN we generally call it as convolutional operation we in case of GNN we generally call it as message passing right it works on the principle that a node uh, that a particular node one edge away is more likely to be interrelated than a node that is uh, four or five edges away right so for an example like if uh, one node is one edge away to a particular node then that will have more co correlation with the uh, surrounding nodes but if one node is like four and five edges away for a particular node then that node is very far away and it may not have a direct correlation or interrelation between the other uh, the node that is far far away right so with this principle uh, the aim is to come up with an optimal node embedding iteratively which captures the context and neighborhood information right so key phrases which are present in this aim is to we will come up with optimal node embedding so main aim of main aim of this message passing technique is to come up with optimal node embedding and that we will do iteratively which will also capture the context and neighborhood information right uh, the message passing techniques involves two operations one of them is like aggregation and uh, update right so every message passing technique that we will see in this series will comprises of two uh, passes right so one is like aggregation and another is update now let's um, take an example and try to understand what this message passing technique is right so if you see here we have four nodes like one two three four which are colored in different uh, colors and they are having a uh, features a representation of the node each of this node is of a six dimensional features right starting from x1 to x6 and each of those nodes are of a different color and I have also colored the features in the same color of the node right so and we are concentrating on the first node that is node 1 and we are checking how the message passing technique works for that particular node right so at first as I mentioned like we will do a two operation aggregate and update so in, in case of uh, message passing technique like if we are if we are at the kth iteration right so if you remember I talked about in the last slide the aim is that we will do it iteratively with certain techniques right so at the kth iteration if my features uh, for the first node looks like this like x1 to x6 and it will capture it will uh, get to know the uh, nearest neighbors or the immediate neighbors of this particular node by using the adjacency matrix right and we can see the corresponding neighbors are h2 and h3 right uh, those embeddings so at first it will do aggregation operation then it will do update operation right so aggregate uh, it will aggregate the feature for its immediate neighbors using the adjacency matrix and that aggregation operation will be a permutation invariance operation right so which is generally sum or average right the, so the ordering of the nodes doesn't matter right so once the aggregation operation is done then it will update its own state right so it started with a uh, so particular color a single color then it will get the uh, features from its surrounding neighbors right two and three so you can see after the update operation uh, the the feature representation for first node has uh, two other colors also the yellow and the orange right which are coming from two and three nodes right so that is that is it's kind of incorporating its nearest neighbors and it's kind of fetching the features from its nearest neighbor and it's updating its own embedding right so still we, we see that the node 4 doesn't have an influence on the node 1 
right because we have only looked at the immediate neighbors right uh, so that's why like the uh, features which are related to 4 doesn't have an impact on node 1 but you can see the node 2 has a uh, influence of node 4 so the x8 feature of node 2 uh, is turned to green right and also uh, like the node 3 with its immediate neighbor that is 1 also got updated with the features of node 1 right so this is the first iteration this is one neighborhood hopping so we can go ahead and do another round of hopping right so now you can see that node 4 will have a influence to node 1 uh, using the node 2 right so node 4 features at first came to node Two using the first iteration and in the second iteration that is k plus 2 uh, now the node 4's feature which is green has been also flown into the node 1 feature right so node 1 now has uh, all the features from its immediate neighbor and also a neighbor that is one hop away right so immediate neighbor plus neighbor of neighbor right so that is the technique of message passing that we kind of incorporates all the surrounding nodes which are like one or two hop away and we incorporate the surrounding features and we come up with the optimal node embedding right so this uh, this can be a question uh, for you right now right what would be the number of hop hops we need to do to incorporate all the uh, surrounding features right so this is also a sensitive parameter which can cause either overfitting or uh, over smoothing information for the large graphs right so you need to choose this parameter very carefully like how many neighborhood hops you want to do so if you if you are doing more hops then you can like you can that can cause overfitting and if you are not doing a particular number of hops it can miss out the surrounding information also right so with that we can see like now we started with each of these features in a, in a uh, four dimensional space and we came up with a new embedding which will have a shape of eight right so we uh, have the immediate node for uh, features for each node which is like h1 h2 and h3 and h4 then using the adjacency matrix it uh, calculates what are its immediate neighbor and also the neighbor of neighbor right and we also have a uh, weight matrix that is kind of a learnable parameter which is a shape of 4 comma 8 in for this example and we come up with a new embedding space for each of these nodes and that has a shape of 4 comma 8 so we started with uh, uh, shape the feature shape of 6 and we went to a feature shape of 8 right so this embedding size is again a hyperparameter which should be tuned during the training process and adjacency matrix is used to fetch the neighborhood information to come up with a, uh, a different set of embedding right for its immediate neighbor and the neighbor of neighbor and this uh, matrix which is the weight matrix that is learned during this uh, back propagation of this uh, graph neural network right